you are a professional producer, engineer or composer, there's probably one thing on your mind to get the job done. And for this you need a DAW that offers efficiency, lightning fast workflow and reliability. Cubase offers all the necessary tools for you to achieve this so that you can get the job done faster and in higher quality. Let's see what professional features you can find in Cubase that will help you even with the tightest of deadlines. Without any doubt, one of the most consuming tasks that you have to do when you're working in a DAW is producing stems, multi-tracks however you want to call them. This is a very tedious procedure that takes a lot of time and you have to be always very careful so that you don't make any mistakes so that your multi-tracks and your stems are exported without any issues. Cubase 11 has all the tools you need to take this task out of the way, get it done as quickly as possible and with the ultimate precision. Let me show you. In order to create stems in Cubase, now we can go to Audio Mixdown, and as you can see, we have quite a few new options. First of all, we can sync the selection of our project with the channel selection in our Audio Mixdown window, which means that if I have selected a bunch of channels, like the synths, for example, in this case, they will all show up here as well. So I don't have to select all these channels one by one. So when I have a selection of channels, I can go here, select a file format. I can also tweak my naming scheme and then I can add this as a job to my queue. So I can go ahead and add my job right here. And as you can see, all the audio files that are going to be exported appear right here and they're going to end up in the project mixdown folder. Now if I want to add another job it's just as easy as checking some other channels, maybe I want to select some cycle markers or maybe I want to select a different file format. And by the way we can also save file format presets. Then I can add this to a queue and then we have another job right there. And with Cubase 11 we also have even more options when it comes to the signal path. So for example I can have my channels exported through the insert effects and the channel strip, so my EQ and all my channel strip settings, or I can export everything completely dry without taking into account any insert effects or EQs. And if that wasn't enough, I can also select to export all my channels using the processing that I have on the groups and the send effects, or even on the master bus. Then when I'm done, I can hit start queue export, Cubase starts exporting, and I can just sit back and relax. In professional recording situations, you might have multi-track recordings of several microphones and you might want to edit these recordings at the same time. In this case, Cubase's group edit function is built exactly for this purpose. Let me show you. Here I have a multi-track drum recording, let's listen to it. And we can see that the drums are played a little bit loose. Maybe I want to tighten them up. So how can we do this? The first thing I have to do is place all my channels in one folder. Let's call this folder drums. If I want to edit all these channels simultaneously so if I don't have any face issues, I can click on this icon right here, group editing, and now whatever I do in one channel, the rest of the channels will follow. For example, if I select to split the audio here, all the channels will be split. And if I move a piece of audio, all of the channels will be moved accordingly. Now there's even more power to the group editing when you use the quantize functions. Let's go and open the quantize panel. As you can see, Cubase immediately detects the hit points in my recording. And now I have two ways to quantize my multi-track drum recording. First of all, I can use audio warping. Okay, so basically this will stretch the audio. Let's check it out. Now I can set my priority here and I can say that my kick drum needs to be the top priority and my snare has less priority and as you can see, the hit points get adjusted accordingly. If I add the overheads, for example, we get even more resolution. So now all I need is to hit quantize and my drums get quantized. Let's listen to them. So now they're tight, they're on the beat. The second way to do this is to use slicing. So instead of using the audio warp, we use slice. Again, I can use the priority sliders to select which element of the recording is going to take priority when we slice. And now I can just hit slice and now we have all the audio slices, and I can hit quantize again and I can even add crossfade between the slices. So now my drums are quantized using the slicing mode. 
So editing with the group edit function becomes a breeze. It goes without saying that if you're a professional and you're looking for the best sound quality as well as mixing ergonomics, Cubase has you covered. First of all, in Cubase, we have the control room section, which works exactly like the control room section of a real console. So we have quite a few things, extensive metering with digital scale, K20 scales, LUFS metering, and when it comes to ergonomics, control room is second to none. It allows you to route your audio to multiple monitors, QSense, so you can send an artist a very nice mix. You can down mix your signal to mono. You can have talkback, control your control room level, even add effects to your control room that are not going to be exported with your stereo out for room correction or for metering. And all of this inside Cubase without any external gear required. In Cubase 11, now we have the most comprehensive metering plugin suite, Supervision. With Supervision, you can basically take a look into your audio directly with all the tools that you would ever need for metering, like level metering, loudness metering, spectral metering, phase meters, correlation meters, spectrograms. Supervision allows you to never have a doubt on what's going on in your music. If you're a professional with tight deadlines, you will really appreciate what the logical editor can do for you. Let me show you what you can do with the logical editor. Let's go to project, project logical editor, and let me give you some examples of what you can do with this amazing tool. Basically, you can program the logical editor to do a bunch of tasks that would normally take you a lot of time. So for example, let's check out some of the presets. I can say I want to colorize small MIDI parts. Maybe I want to delete volume automation. Maybe I want to randomize the start position for MIDI parts by 10 ticks. How long would that take? Maybe I want to select MIDI parts named drum. Or maybe I want to add a date to selected MIDI and audio tracks. Why don't we do this? I'm going to select these tracks right here and let's add today's date to their names. And as you can see, when I choose that preset, we can see all the conditions and all the different steps that the logical editor is going to take so that we can do this action. Let's hit apply and see what happens to these tracks. And as you can see, immediately we have our date added to our channels. Let's try something else. One thing that you might want to do very often is to clean up your project from empty tracks. Let's go to the logical editor, go to tracks and say delete empty tracks. And as you can see, container, if we have a track that's empty, then we want to delete this track. Let's hit apply. And as you can see, I have a bunch of empty tracks right here. Let's hit apply and let's see what happens. And boom, they just disappeared. That's it. And it goes without saying that all these presets can be edited so that you can customize them to your needs. For example, I might select the delete MIDI tracks in this case, but instead of MIDI, I want to change this to a marker track or maybe to an audio track. And now I've just changed the preset and I can save it as my own. And instead of delete MIDI tracks, I can rename this delete audio tracks. And now I have a new preset that I just created. So as you can see, the logical editor can really help you automate tasks that would normally take a long, long time to perform. Another really killer feature that you can find in Cubase is the track versions. Let me show you. Audio channels, instrument channels, MIDI channels, they can all have track versions. So let's check them out. In order to access the track versions, you hover your mouse on the track name and then you can select the different versions. For example, I have a bass take here and as you can see, these are recorded with a neck pickup. But then I thought, why not have another version with the bridge pickup? So I created another version and I recorded a completely different take with the bridge pickup. Now, if I wanted to record another version, I could go here and add a new version. And Cubase now gives me a blank track so I can start recording there. I can even duplicate versions. Let's say I want to duplicate the bridge pickup version. And there we go. Now I have another copy there and I can also delete versions. And of course I can rename the versions exactly how I want to. So maybe I want to say duplicate the bridge pickup and then rename it to bridge pickup edited if I'm about to do some edits in it. Track versions are really powerful and they allow you to check different variations of your recordings while playing your music. Let me show you. Let me play this track right here and I'm going to switch between the neck pickup version and the bridge pickup version. And now I can judge which version I like the most. Let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> 
And as you can see, switching between versions is completely seamless, which means I can audition all these different things very easily without interrupting my workflow. It goes without saying that you can have different track versions on MIDI tracks and instrument tracks as well. So you can imagine all the possibilities when you're using track versions. Imagine doing multiple track versions for a drum take for multiple mics. Imagine I can create multiple track versions for my drums. I can do this on multiple tracks at once as well. There we go. I honestly cannot think of any DAW user that will not love this feature. Cubase offers really powerful tools when it comes to aligning audio files. This is extremely crucial when you're working with multiple vocal takes, for example, backing vocals or vocal choirs, where you want them to be very, very tight. So let me show you an example. I have this vocal right here, which is my lead, and then we have some backing vocals right here. Let's give it a listen. I wanna know if there's a place for me in paradise. So as you can hear, these vocals are a little bit loose right now and it's very easy to make them super tight. Let me show you. I'm going to open the audio alignment panel and then I'm going to select a vocal to be my reference vocal. In this case, I'm going to select my lead vocal. Now I'm going to select my target vocals. In this case, the backing vocals. Hit plus and now I can hit align audio and pay attention to the waveforms. So now let's give it a listen. I wanna know if there's a place for me in paradise. So there you go, tied back in vocals, sorted. So at this stage, the only thing I want to say is enjoy using Cubase and also enjoy all the free time that you're going to gain by using it. <laughs>